This is going to blow your mind. Folks, the Democratic coalition that they rely on in order to be competitive and win against the Republican Party is disappearing before their eyes. They are freaking out, folks. I'm trying to tell you that not only are black voters tired of the Democratic Party, Latino voters are tired of the Democratic Party. It's going down. I'm going to update you to everything that's happening. Don't move. Stay tuned. My name is Tim Black, and this is Calling It Out. Calling It Out with Tim Black. I'm glad you stuck around for this because this is unprecedented. What's happening right now? They're unable to make up enough excuses to cover for it. The black community, the Latino community. I'm going to get to the Asian community too because I noticed there is movement in the Asian community as well. They are tired of the nonsense, folks. It's happening. It's happening right now. I'm going to jump to a clip to get this started. Let's start first with the Latinos. Then we're going to go to the black community because I want to save the biggest moves last. They tell me they are not a monolith and it's really difficult to just use one ad campaign to reach out to everybody because there are so many varying opinions and priorities within the Latino community. The one thing they agreed on though is that uh, in their culture they say they don't like it when people beat around the bush. They want people to get to the point and they're tired of hearing Biden's rhetoric and flowery language. They want to hear more details. They want to hear a specific platform about what he plans to do. Latino voters are tired of the nonsense. They're not going for the flowery language, the overarching speeches that don't go anywhere. That's not working for the Latino community. They want to know exactly what Joe Biden's plans are for Latinos. How will their vote be earned by the, by the Democratic Party? What are you going to do for them? How is it going to impact their lives? What is your vision? Don't tell me. Don't tell me, oh, we need to save democracy. That's not working for Latinos. Latinos want to know what's in it for them. They are not a monolith. They never are. That's the thing about Latinos. There's always a split, but that split between the Latinos, what, what Latinos are going to vote Democrat, and the ones that are going to vote Republican, is starting to flip. It's usually about 60-40, okay? 60% Democrat, 40% Republican. That is changing. And, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but 20 points Oh, that, that will decide elections in certain heavily Latino-populated states. Believe that, in districts. Know that. Know that matters. With more on that, check this out. The Democrats are not only going to play their religion on abortion, but also on climate change. You know who doesn't really care about that? The Latino vote. Latinos are not focused on the abortion issue. They're not focused on the climate change issue. They are more worried about the economy and, and, and really how expensive it is to live right now and pay the bills and pay for food, food and, and gasoline right. prices. And they don't want an EV vehicle. So what you're seeing is a traditional Democrat coalition is weakening. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. What I tell you, folks, what I'm trying to tell you is this is not this is not what the Democratic Party wants to hear at all. Folks, they already had their backs against the wall with the black community. Now they have the Latino community doing the same thing. They're saying, look, we're not coming out for Joe Biden just to come out for Joe Biden. We don't want to hear about the abortion thing. See, here, here's the deal. A lot of Latinos are very religious folks. There are a lot of Catholics in the Latino community. And they don't, they, they're not bothered by the abortion ban as much as some other communities are. So there's different types of demographics, different types of um, environments in which the Democrats, I mean, sorry, yeah, different types of environments in which Latino families have been born. And remember, once again, not a monolith from different countries with different backgrounds, with different religious leanings different faiths. That's going to dictate where their politics is. In the Democratic Party, what they're trying to do now is they're trying to run on a couple things. Immigration, they're saying that Trump's going to be harsh on integration. Uh, believe it or not, there are a lot of Latino folks who economically, they're worried about their economics and immigration impacts their economics as well. Then you got the abortion. A lot of the, the uh, moderate Democrats, the bl vote blue anywho, the moderate, mid middle-of-the-road type Democrats, they are banking on the ability of Joe Biden to run up votes 
talking about Roe versus Wade. But once again, if you're a religious person who is who is pro-life, um, anti-abortion, then you may look at this in a whole different way. And that's what that newscast is saying there. Now, one more video about the Latinos that I want to share with you. And this is the most exciting one because this kind of blows the Democrats out of the water with the Latino vote. I want to show you this New York Times Siena College poll that found that both black and Hispanic voters say that Donald Trump's policies has have helped them more than Joe Biden's policies by pretty wide margins, especially when you look at Hispanic voters. Is that alarming to you that nothing that the Biden campaign has said or done to this point has brought that at least closer than it is right now in this polling? The Biden administration has an incredible track record of support in making sure that it is working at all times to build an economy from the middle out uh, and the bottom up as opposed to the top down. I almost feel bad for Hakeem Jeffries. That is horrible, man. Is, is this guy a surrogate? He has to be a surrogate for Joe Biden. Man, Hakeem is not doing a good job at all. He didn't convince me of anything except he didn't know what to say. The bottom is getting knocked out of the Democratic Party right now. Things are looking bad. And he's telling you, oh, no, no, no. We got this great coalition. They're always there for us. No. What I'm telling you, what Abby's telling you is that's not working. It's not holding right now. Latino voters, more Latino voters. What was that number? That number was 37% of Latinos feel their lives were better and they were helped more by Trump policies. Not by Trump rhetoric. Not about something he said coming out of an escalator. Not about a comment he made about his city shoes or the new sneakers. About policy. Very bottom of the line with the Latino voters. See, a lot of folks misunderstand something. They think, I had people writing me long, long emails about Tim Black. You got to watch your language. Don't be disparaging about immigrants and immigrants and immigrants. Let me tell you something, folks. You know who's most concerned about immigration? whether it be legal or illegal immigration, Latinos. That's true. That's true. But, but check this out. You know who's most opposed to a lot of it? Latinos. Who you think got to get the jobs up first? Who you think is going to be most impacted? Latinos. A lot of Latino Americans, a lot of Hispanic Americans are concerned with the policies of the Joe Biden administration because these people are coming into their environments predominantly their environments. That's where they're going to go. They're going to come in. They're coming in through. Don't, don't get it twisted. They're definitely impacting all environments. They're going into the black communities in Chicago, in New York, and Philadelphia. But we know this. At the end of the day, when they settle in, they're going to want to be around people that they speak the language with, people that they, they are more they are more accustomed to. They share some custom, customs and commonalities, whether it be Religion, environmental, historical, or cultural. So that's going to be part of it. And what was the last time you heard Joe Biden talking to the Latino community, getting their opinion on this, uh, the changes in the border policy? See, once again, folks, see, focusing on, see, I hear a lot of people with a lot of harsh criticism for black folks who are concerned about job opportunities. Uh, the ability, the, uh, the access to resources, uh, the government programs, and uh, the after-school programs, uh, the clinics, the, the resources that they need in the communities for quality of life. They're concerned about their access to that, okay? Um, so, but I'm getting a lot of pushback about how black folks are not being very considerate, not being kind, not being thoughtful. Look, folks, and I think, I, I, and, and I would like to say, I speak for a number of black folks in the community. We don't want to hurt Latino folks. We're not out to hurt migrants. The problem is, and what you must understand is, we don't want to be hurt either. So with the same amount of empathy that you're showing to migrants, the undocumented, how about a little consideration for the black voter? Latino voters would like to also have consideration. Latinos who went through the process, of getting legalized, going through the process the right way, and going through all the hoops. And I understand it's very difficult to go through that process. Well, what if you went through that process and now you're dealing with this? 
So once again, Latino Americans are upset about that or concerned about that. Not all of them, though. Not all are concerned about it. Some are just concerned about their wallets. Some are just concerned about the economy. And they don't want your body coming up with long speeches talking about what it used to be a lifeguard at a black pool. What does that got to do with the cost of the enchiladas? What's that got to do with the cost of a gallon of milk? The leche. What's that got to do with it? So let's just keep it a buck. Let's, let's, let's be very honest about what we're dealing with and how the Democrats need to wake up and smell the coffee. You better wake up and smell what the rock is cooking, baby. So now let's go to the black community. First clip will be Reverend Al doing his best to try to pull the rug from under our feet. His whole thing is he wants to get black people upset. Well, if, and maybe we show how insulted we should be. Maybe we'll stick with Joe. I repeat the insult of saying that black voters would in some way be enticed to support him because he had a mugshot like all of us are criminals or to say that because he has four indictments, one of which, or really two of which, both Georgia and the federal around him trying to rob votings. When we had to fight, people were bloody beaten and killed to get us the right to vote. And one person, one of his supporters got on Fox News saying, blacks love him because of the sneakers. So let me get this right. He didn't support George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, Biden did, and signed an executive order. He didn't support the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. But we supposed to go for sneakers and a mugshot. And those blacks that are standing there with him, have you no shame? Okay. So you see how he threw that in at the end, right? Once again, that's what the, that's the tactic. He actually said it out loud. Reverend Al said it out loud, but he was what they're really what their secret sauce is. That's right, Al Sharpton said it out loud what their secret sauce is, what their go-to is gonna be. If nothing else works, let's shame the black people. Let me shame you. Have you no shame standing there with Joe? Oh, said it, I'm sorry. Standing there with Trump. How you gonna support Trump? He didn't support the John, John Lewis Bill, the Voters' Rights Act. He didn't support uh the 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 the, the what is it, the uh Eric Garner, what is it, the, the Juneteenth, uh, what was it? Harry Tubman on the dollar, what was it, hip hop day? What what is it that he didn't support? Something else, I'm sure. Okay, let's look look, Al. I'm sorry, Al. I'm sorry, Al. You are behind a couple decades, okay? It may be time for you to go ahead and sit it down, get some tea, sit on the porch. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to be respectful with this. The bottom line is this. Black folks, this ain't working. The Jedi mind trick ain't working when you tell us this is what you should do because this is what you should do. Nah, that's not. Nah, that's not going to work. We're grown-ass people. As far as Black people identifying with Donald Trump over mugshots, that's stupid. Anybody who's going to vote for Donald Trump because he got a mugshot is stupid. Now, some people may feel like, hey, we got something in common. The police be on our ass, police on his ass. But that's not a reason to vote for someone. The problem, and look, and here, I'm going to flip it this way, though. Let me put it this way. If there are actually people that are swayed by something like a mugshot of a Donald Trump mugshot, wouldn't that sh go to show just how lame the connection is between the Democratic Party and those voters? I mean, if you are influenced to vote Republican because of a mugshot of Donald Trump, that would mean that there's been no connectivity. There's been no coalescence. There has been no real infusion from the Democratic Party to persuade you towards the Democrats. I'm looking at it that way. This is saying, Al Sharpton, I think you know how it is. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Well, just so happens, black men feel the same way. A black man, if a black man ain't happy, ain't nobody gonna be happy. The Democrats ain't gonna be happy because we ain't gonna come out and vote. You need to understand how this works. So don't browbeat us about why we're not happy. Democratic Party ain't making us happy. That's why we ain't happy. We want to get our back rub, our feet massage. Where's our food? Where's our where you been? What's going on? Where what how are we gonna eat? What's in the policies for us? We know what something's in there for the LGBTQ. We know something was in there for the dreamers under Obama. What's in it for black folks? What's in it for black America? 
Okay, so now, uh, and, and as far as sneakers, that's just stupid. Anybody voted for Trump because the sneakers is off balance. But once again, and look, first of all, I think the sneakers were a good marketing play. That was a good way to raise money. There are a lot of campaigns that sell T-shirts. What's the difference between T-shirts and sneakers? Go to the Joe Biden store. He's selling T-shirts and yard signs. Is it Trump's fault? that Joe Biden could come up with a higher price item to sell? And if he could have come up with a higher price item to sell, he wouldn't have tried to sell it? Oh, I know what it is. Biden's already selling his soul to APAC and all these other organizations. Hello? Maybe to the pharmaceutical companies, like Jim Clyburn. So we ain't got to sell no shoes if you already sold your soul to the lobbyists on Capitol Hill. Ain't that right? All right, let's go to another clip. I don't want to stay here too long. We got to keep it moving. Is bleeding support from the African-American community. Now, it's more noticeable with black men particularly, but it is overall as well. What do you think is behind it? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. I think, you know, as you said, you know, different polls say different things. Um, you know, there's there's other polls that are showing, including one that Cornell Belcher recently did that says that that uh, percentage of those Black voters looking to support Trump is, is closer to 11 or, or 12 percent. You know, when we talk about the trends, though, uh, the reality is that at about this point in the election cycle in 2020, Joe Biden's approval ratings or favorability ratings in the black community at that time were close to around 76 percent. Um, and so he's really at about where he was in, in, in 2020. With that said, obviously, you've got, um, you know, a lot of stories and some anecdotes about black men in particular that are leaning towards Trump. But I just got to say, it just doesn't match what we're seeing in the community when we're out doing doing our work. It's not matching what we're what we're seeing or hearing. And it's not matching the way that black men or black voters in general have been voting um, in recent election cycles. Whether yeah. you look at Georgia or Kentucky or even Ohio and the, the abortion referendum. Yeah, so some of the arguments that have been made are that it might not necessarily be that they, you know, they have a lot of um, passion for Biden um, and they might not come out. But then, but then, you know, we're seeing something else. And that's a significant number of people who've said in recent polls that they would actually vote for Trump, you know, 13 percent, 17 percent around those numbers, depending on the poll, uh, which is obviously a lot higher than the 8% he got in 2020. So that means that since then, black voters have looked at Trump, listened to his message and says, yeah, you know, he's he's the man for me, despite the many statements he's made that have been widely described as racist against black people. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, it just doesn't match what we're seeing and hearing. I think that there's a difference between, you know, as you say, the people saying at this point, eight months out, oh, yeah, I'm thinking about voting for Trump, right? Or, or even saying that in a poll and the way that we actually vote. You know, it is not all that um, unlikely or, or unfamiliar. <laughs> that brother was in the hot seat, man. That brother didn't know what to say. Brother Albright, it's okay, man. It's okay, brother. Look, one of the problems I had with Jeff Albright's his, his point here is that he's saying it as if what happened in 2020 has anything to do with what's going to happen in 2024. I said what happened in 2020 don't have nothing to do with what's going to happen in 2024. A lot has changed since 2020. There was a thing called a pandemic. And 41% of black businesses went away. What did Joe Biden do to reinstate those businesses? It happened after Joe Biden. He shut down the companies. He shut them down. They haven't come back. What has been the solution for that? Yeah, I know we want to talk about pronouns. We want to talk about Roe versus Wade. Guess what? What about the businesses? What about our wallets? What about our economics? I know he sent aid to Ukraine. He sent aid to Israel. What about aid to Main Street? What about aid to the community? What about aid to the hood? What about aid to the middle class? What about aid to us trying to bounce back with our businesses? So that's something that should be brought up. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to throw that on this brother because that brother ain't got nothing to do with this. But what I'm saying is, he's not really ringing true to what's going on in the ground. And when you're saying, hey, this is not, it's not like Jim Clyburn with the, uh, this is not what we're saying in the, this is not what we're saying in the real world. It's not what I'm hearing when I go to the community, when I talk to my cousins, when I talk to my nephews. 
They don't want to tell you the truth is what's going on, Albright. They don't want to hurt your feelings, bro. A lot of every black person knows other black people who are considering voting for Donald Trump or thinking about voting for the most valuable player, the couch. I always hear people say they're going to vote for the couch so much it was starting to get me pissed off because I want people to get out and vote third party. But I can't change how people are feeling. I, I can only report what's happening. I'd rather everybody go out and vote for Dr. Cornell West. That's what I would rather see happen. I've had Dr. West on my show many times. Unequivocally, that's who I support. I, just, I support him. I support Dr. Jill Stein, Claudia Dana Cruz. I support third party candidates. Push came to shove, I would support RFK over Joe Biden. He got to get his Israel policies correct, though. His Israel policies are bad. And he changed his mind about reparations. So, I, you know, th these are concerns. Okay? Uh, but, but I would support RFK over Joe Biden and over Donald Trump. Let's be very clear here. Look, the polling that the, that the brother pointed out here, at the 23%. That's a serious number. That's why I'm looking at it now. I was reporting this a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I was, I was making a prediction that 30%, I was looking at 30% of black men going with Donald Trump. That was my prediction. I'm holding fast to that prediction. My opinion changed. I did an interview about nine months ago, and my brother was asking me this question, and I was like, I can see about 15 I can't see more than that. Well, things have changed. I've been paying attention. Your commentary, your analysis should change with the times. You should not be talking now. You should not be talking in 2024 about what happened in 2020. A lot has changed. A lot has gone on. Look, if Joe Biden wrote out a, a, suite, of, a suite of initiatives focused on the black community, we would all listen. Because this is not about our emotions. This is not about our attitudes. This is not about a love affair uh, with a particular candidate. This is about what's best for the black community and all communities. What's best for working people. What's best for Latinos and Asians and all of us. That's how we all must be looking at this as a transaction. So that's what Joe Biden needs to do. Will he do that? If he doesn't do that, he will not win the black vote. Or he may win the black vote, but it won't be enough to help him win the election. We don't apologize. For, I don't apologize for that. No one should. If, no one should apologize for that. All that shame that they're doing about sitting with Donald Trump and brothers and sisters not acting right, not going the way that they should go. We don't, we don't know how the electoral policies work. We don't understand the legislative body. You're not getting there. We got, you know, we got that sister coming out. What's her name? Jasmine Crockett. Jasmine Crockett and Simone Sanders and, and John, all these people coming out telling us that we're not doing it right. Folks, it's very simple. Our votes are earned. Earn our vote. You don't earn our vote, you won't get our vote. It's like this. Either Joe Biden's going to put up some policy initiatives that impact the black community, that moves the black community to want to support him, or he will not get the black vote. And if he gets the black vote, it won't be enough black vote in order to defeat Donald Trump. All this talking, all this shaming, you can, you can cut out Jasmine Crockett and Simone Sanders and Dr. Jason Johnson and Tiffany Cross and Angela Rye and all of them could come out at one time and they could yell and scream and throw a fit and fall out on the ground and have the Holy Ghost hit them. It won't change it. This is a business decision that the black community is making, that working class folks are making, that Latinos are making, and Asians are making, Native Americans are making it. Everybody's doing what's in their best interest. And why is that? It's a new day. Any questions? All right, dear.